so England have opened their World Cup account against Haiti. It was a 1-0 win. It was a laboured 1-0 win. So um, if you compare it to last year at the Euros, they were a half a step slower. Uh, the intensity level wasn't quite there. Uh, the speed in possession wasn't quite there. Um, VAR dominates the first half. There's a lot of VAR discussion. Um, the second half, England controlled the possession, had the majority of the chances, but they looked exposed at the back. That's the best way I can describe this England performance. Uh, in transition, when the ball breaks down, the play breaks down in the midfield. Going the other way, they look very vulnerable. So, you know, that that's something that I've, I've picked up from one game. Um, this time last year, when they won the Euros, they were doing everything at pace. Uh, there was a higher level of intensity. Um, and, and when they were in position, they were moving the ball quicker. Everything was done quicker. Everything was done with a bit more purpose and intensity. They were spreading the play quicker. So if on one flank, they're getting shut down, they would switch it to the other wing. Um, they didn't do that as much today or as effectively today. And yes, they're playing against very stubborn opposition who have got a bit of pace about them. So as I say, in that transition, England looked very vulnerable to um, Haiti counterattacks. Um, yeah, you know. You could argue they are missing three key pieces from last year's Euros winning side. I think missing Frank Kirby and Beth Mead is definitely in an attacking sense had a, a detrimental impact on uh, this side in creativity and, and uh, goal scoring because they scored from the penalty spot. There was no goal from open play. Now, the VAR side of things, there's a nine-minute spell where it, VAR is the talking point. So the initial penalty, the first penalty check is on 18 minutes. And the reason why it's not given as a penalty, and this is where the referee being fully mic'd up is explaining to not only the stadium, but the audience's home, was there was a foul in the build-up before the second foul, which is, I think, a more serious foul. Um, if that was, was, let's say, in the championship here in England, in the men's game, that is a penalty. Uh, but there is a foul in the build-up, which leads to the second foul. So that's given us no penalty. That's on 18 minutes. Now, England have started to camp down uh, this end of the field. They um, controlling the possession, cross comes in, it is a clear deliberate handball, VAR does check it, it's given as a penalty on 25 minutes, Georgia Stanway steps up, Taylor, the Haitian goalkeeper, saves it, there's encroachment, so VAR gets involved again, it's gone for a corner, VAR gets involved again, the penalty has to be retaken, and Georgia Stanway obviously scores the resulting retaken penalty. Now, with the VAR, how they've changed things is, yeah, fully miking up the officials so when they are going for a check and when they do have to make a decision they are explaining why that decision has been made i think that is a positive i don't know why that wasn't in there from the beginning all those years ago back in 2017 2018 when they were experimenting with VAR before the men's world cup in russia um so i don't know why that hasn't been in place from the get-go um they are also using semi-autonomous offsides as well so We'll see how that plays out and if that has a bearing on any games later in the tournament. I don't think it was necessary today. There weren't many offsides today. Neither side was getting caught offside. Uh, they were holding their line very, very well as attackers. And I don't think either side was really playing the offside trap. So the semi-autonomous offsides didn't really come into play. Now, as the game wears on, um, England obviously start to dominate the possession. However, they look very exposed at the back when the ball gets turned over. Uh, Mary Epps has pulled up two very, very good saves. England going forward, Russo's obviously had a lot of chances, uh, but there was also a lot of wayward finishing as well. And I, I, as I say, Kirby and, and, and Mead both missing from last year's winning side. I think that has had an impact in an attacking sense. Um, if the wing play wasn't as effective in this game as they were last year. So... When you lose key pieces from your core starting lineup, that does have an impact. So you've got to go and use the depth and, and you know, next player off the rank mentality, next cab off the rank mentality. I do think there may, there may be some changes to the starting lineup for the next game. Other things I took out of it was, yeah, Haiti had a better intensity level. They, they obviously had no fear. They're not expected to do anything. Um, and they kept their energy levels up right until the full time. So full time whistles. So. I think England need to tighten up defensively, uh, transition play when, let's say, the ball go does get turned over and they have to go back towards their goal. They need to work more as a unit in, in tracking back. Um, the midfield, big gap between the midfield and the centre-backs. There's a lot of space in there, um, which is a concern. And Emily Bright hasn't only played one game since March. So, again, I'm not really keen on selecting players uh, into 
international squads who haven't played a lot of club club games when they've been injured. Uh, and that is a concern, especially a key centre-back piece, such as Millie Bright, one game in five months. That is a concern. Now, yes, you've obviously got the leadership abilities, but starting first game of a tournament um, with a, a player who hasn't got much match fitness, yeah, that's a risk. That is a risk. Many teams have done it at international level and it sometimes backfires. I think England will build into this tournament. They've got through a very difficult, tricky encounter, but there were some warning signs there and there are better games to come. Um, and so we'll see what happens. We'll see how it plays out. Haiti were very good uh, value for money for a very inexperienced young side. A lot of teenagers in their side, a lot of youngsters. And they play with a lot of energy. And I can see them possibly upsetting Denmark or China. But I think England have to play better um, and have to build into this tournament. Uh, as I say, last year, they, they were just 100 miles an hour from the get-go. This year, you can see a definite change. Um, and as I say, missing key players and some players who haven't played a lot of lot of games in the squad, you can see that having an impact. But they've had a lot of preparation out in Australia and New Zealand. They've been out uh, in Australia now for a couple of weeks. The squad's been together for a month. Um, you would think there would be a little bit more intensity and, and speed with play, but they've got past a very tricky encounter. But no goals from open play, which last year they were scoring goals for fun. So... How, how much a difference a year makes. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Um, place your thoughts below on, on the uh, tweaks to VAR and uh, the autonomous, semi-autonomous offsides. Um, they weren't obviously in play in this game, but they obviously have been in play in other games, which I haven't seen because of you know time difference. Um, some of the games are kicking off at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning my time, so I won't be able to watch every game. I haven't. I've missed a few. Uh, but there we go. So uh, a scrappy 1-0 win, but a 1-0 win nonetheless. Thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.